I covered the uh, geo channels and non graph in previous episodes. Gonna link them in the description. And um, here's now new procedural nodes. So first off, projection nodes. That's kind of cool, isn't it? Okay, so here we have a tileable texture that I have repeated. And then let's say that, yeah, I wanna have a live projection. I'm gonna scoot around. I'm not really sure what I want it. And uh, let's see what, how we can do that. Okay, so yeah, here in the no graph, I'm just gonna take a uh, projection node projection uh, take a uh, this one projection and first off I just gonna insert this one here as a base I just gonna blend this in in a second here and then we want uh, something to project so let's take something here for example uh, maybe this one here take the output take a look here what we get and there we get it so first off um i just want it once here repeated once and now it's just gonna live here let's set it to over okay so now we can actually define a coordinate system so you can either choose something here uh, like a already like a perspective view or uh, ortho view but in my case i want to define a uh, like a coordinate system so i hit the plus sign here and we get a locator and then we can hit the p button to actually start to move this now so yeah here we can see we can start to uh, move it in uh, different directions let's um let's see if we can Let's say that we want to place it like this and uh, now we, we essentially also want to cut out the opacity on this. So uh, object locators is not the easiest to control to be honest. Um, at the moment it's still the same uh, issues with gizmos uh, or these uh, like selection gizmos that's not the best. So I hope they fix that in uh, this uh, like incoming versions because yeah sometimes you select object vice versa so uh, yeah edit uh, i just want to duplicate this node now here and uh, put my opacity in here instead route this one out to the mask and we should now have a uh, like a pothole here if i select the locator we should be able to translate this around wherever we want it. Uh, I really want to, to see improvements in the actual locator and selection because it's so easy to, to, to grab the wrong thing and uh, yeah. Anyway, so that's the projector. There's also a, another node here called uh, camera projection, similar, but I think it's more uh, suited for uh, camera projection. So you would say, you can go to your, let's say that you wanna project something from here you can create the camera, so projectors, you store a camera there, so project one, let's say that it's the same thing here, you select project one there, and you can set the clipping to both, so now it's going to be from that uh, camera where you stored the projector there. So you can set up similar. Okay, so that was the projection node. So let's take a look at curvature. So we have a uh, some kind of real-time curvature. It's 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 pretty decent actually for uh, the for what you get here. I mean, it, it's it's kind of a real-time thing here. Um, you can set what type of uh, convex convex activity. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so it's, it's gonna be, um, I guess it's, it's based upon the dense or how dense the geometry is. Uh, in my case here, for example, if I increase the level here, you can see that the resolution here actually becomes better. Um, it is, there's always gonna be some kind of artifacts. Um, you can see if you zoom in here, you can see it's, Stair stepping, but yeah, I guess if you bake this out to something and uh, blur it a bit, you can get away some of it and, and use it. But I mean, it's fast and it's kind of real time, and it depends on the geometry that you have. You can also here you see here you actually that's that's nice that you, you now have uh, multiple outputs, so you can choose here what you wanna target from this node. So that's a good when you do some comps here, have these different modes. 
so that's something I like. Um, I wish you had more inputs on nodes instead as well, because, for example, why can't I uh, uh, alter the scale here, having a scale input as well? That's the whole point of having uh, an old uh, graph, that you have inputs and outputs exposed, otherwise it's hard to make a, a real procedural workflow. So I hope um, I Foundry, take a look at that. We really need inputs on all our nodes, not just UV and position. We we need to be able to drive uh, scales and everything on, on all nodes. So that's something that's really needed if we're gonna do some real clever materials in the future. Fractals, so take a look at FPM. There we have FPM fractal, let's see here. Yeah, so that's that's the FPM uh, noise there. We should also have the Voronoi fractal. And let's take a look at that. Uh, procedural fractal Voronoi. So I guess uh, this one can come in handy if I want to make some kind of, you know, anodized metal maybe. Can have it like a flake. We also have cellular onto this one. Marble. Okay, so yeah, so that's uh, the marble and now we should have a, a new a few bricks for example, it's a new one. Let's take a look what we can do with this one. Bricks, bricks generator. So this one I, I noticed, I haven't really tried it, but it, it actually has, uh, you can project it as well from position. So let's try that, see what happens if we have a locator locator there you go so now it's from a position so it would set a different coordinate system offset gap so there you have the the brick one and uh, believe it or not we we have a checkerboard in in mori now <laughs> it's uh something that you would think would have been there for a long time ago, but yeah, now we have it. Checkboard, same goes here. You have actually a projection field here. Let's say you wanna project it from a certain angle or something, and you can uh, get uh, octaves here on uh, the tiles here. And then we have scratches. So this one is a bit uh, funky when you wanna do, uh, some, I guess, some kind of procedural scratches and stuff. Let's see here, if we set this to something uh, scale here, let's take something small. And I guess uh, you would then maybe take a cloud or something to alter the impression of the scratches over the surface. Let's see. And uh, yeah, I guess you have to level this and do some operations because out of the box it's gonna look a bit funky here. Um, I'm play now with the uh, the opacity and waviness, rotation. There's a lot of settings here that I have to go through. Play with the octaves here. And then we have weave. It's another new uh, pattern for making cloth type of uh, effects. So let's take a look. Output. And all of these nodes seem to have now uh, the notion of uh, the projections and the uh, camera projection systems. So I guess that's good when you have a um, direction or uh, you want it to uh, be from like across geometry instead of uh, on a UV basis, you kind of project it on to the clothes. Let's see here what we can do. So we have the tile size here, the width, of the weaves there. Step over if you want to do some kind of herringbone type of effects. Rotation. And you also here, let's see, I think you get a, yeah, kind of a mask for the different uh, directions of this. If you want to do some, add some effects, you can use these as uh, secondary masks to drive uh, other effects. And also, that's really good that we now start to get more nodes for making uh, building blocks for other type of effects. In my case here, we have now 
a lot of new math nodes. So that's gonna be good for, like for combining things and building uh, nodes uh, that is more math driven. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see what I, I, I definitely always multiply and uh, you know, those these kind of uh, type of operations and traditionally I used uh, the merge nodes to do that but now we have more I guess more optimized nodes that doesn't have the overhead of the merge nodes so it's gonna be good uh, when we start to build uh, these type of effects and also now we have a misc utility so vector stuff that's good and it's also good to be able to have split out things so let's take a look at something here we have vector uh, split vector combine uh, so let's take a look at vector split and vector combine let's say that you have a um, i test normal or something and you have a, let's say that we have a loud or something that you want to do something to in my case here let's take this that go to height as normal and look at it let's say that you want to now operate on some of the channels here so what you can do here you can run it through vector split now you have it so you you pipe it out through rgba then you can pipe it back rgba so right now it's going to look the same but uh, imagine that you want to do something on just the red channel so let's take a look at the red channel so that's the red channel let's say that you want to multiply only the red channel by something so we can use one of the new math nodes so let's see mul math multiply and let's say that we want to take red multiplied by let's say constant value first set this to one and this is going to be no change now but now if i would start here now i can start to you see here tweak the the value of uh, the red channel individually so now i'm multiplying to this so yeah that's uh, good and it's also like if you want to combine the rgb values and just do some kind of splitting and combining so that, that's a good node and we also have a normal strength now i guess that's good with material creation as well to be able to set the strength of a normal normal modulation so yeah okay so atlas random here so i need to prepare a map here to demonstrate something so let's imagine we have an image and we have uh, four different patterns that I want to randomize between. For example, let's take, just make something here. Let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to save this now as a transparent PNG. So here in modern now we want to use this Atlas randoms. Okay, so we visualize it and uh, there is nothing there now. So now we uh, going to use this node that I created uh, recently. So Peter, my desktop. There it is, the PNG file. Okay, so uh, yeah, that doesn't look so cool. First off, we have this horizontal tile. So if I now set this to two by two, that's not what I want because I want to tile this now across the object. So first off, I'm gonna create the UV. Then I'm gonna create a multiply node to um, multiply this by a number. So I'm gonna take constant. Pipe this into the B and the result, so it's going to be no change. And now we can start to tile this. I want to tile this X amount of times here, so I'm just multiplying the UV. We can see here, let's actually create a color or a tile texture or something. There we can see now my uh, it's going to randomize my the, these different so. Where I said two by two, if you think thought about how I created it, I created them in like sections. So one, like one half of the image had this image in it, the one half of that, and and so on. And now we can go here into the randomization. We can start to mess here with the, the random seed here, and then we can also start to play with gonna uh, rotate uh, and do so yeah this is a way to kind of uh, repeat patterns or images within uh, a uh, like a subset of images I take it back here one by one and I'm controlling this here the repeat just on the UV with this 
UV multiplied by uh, a value. Going back here to the random, we can also play here with like orientation, randomization of this seed here. Uh, so that's the Atlas random, I guess. I'm gonna use it more like distributing maybe like uh, patterns or um, for example like maybe you have like 10 different stones uh, laid out in a grid like 5x5 five five or 6x6 six six onto an image because when you start to the more you increase this you have to use your images you have to have the same kind of spacing on your source file that you set here so in my case i made two by two because then it match if i had three images one two three one two three one two three uh, it would uh, match up so yeah i guess it's going to be depending on your source file how you do this you do will probably have like one uh, or two gaps with nothing to get like a, a gap here. So we can actually test that. If I take away take away the blue one, I'm gonna get spacing somewhere. Save as, let's load PNG file two. Now we get uh, less images there. So let's also jump back here. Let's say that we wanna take this one, scale it down. We wanna take this one see what happens then so let's go back here range now but if i set uh, three by three didn't match I, I need to keep them within the, the spacing there so now we're gonna see start to see strange things there but yeah you get a drift if i spend some time and do this but um yeah that's a way to use atlas random yeah it's gonna be interesting to see what i can use this for more in depth going forward okay so in the next episode we're gonna take a look at the new shaders in mari 4.6 open beta